the Lakeview Park. We're a Christ-centered body of believers established on the Word of God, focused on the needs of our community and the world. We have no greater call than to know Him, to be known by Him, and to lead others to Him. Good morning, Lakeview Park Church of the Nazarene. We're so glad you're here today. We're going to worship through praise and music, prayer, and Pastor Susie's message. transition down. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. It's so good to see all of you in the house of the Lord today. Yeah. So uh, I have a few announcements. Uh, our first one is we have Triple FN this Friday, April 1st at six o'clock. That's right. All the whooping chippers for that. Uh, we're going to be having board games, uh, pickleball. Uh, so if you want to go get some pickleball in, uh, be sure to do that. Uh, Lisa Williams over here, she's a, she's a fierce warrior at pickleball. So uh, if you can go beat her. <laughs> so uh, we have pickleball. And we'll have basketball going on. Uh, we will also be doing uh, crisis care kits for 
Crane. So if you're interested in coming and helping do that, uh, John Moy and uh, Tammy Waits are in charge of that. They're getting that going. So uh, we would love to have you come out and help us with that. That would be amazing. Also, uh, you see on the front row, we have our teens up here. Uh, we ha Yeah, that's right. Pop it up. Ooh. Yep, go teens. Uh, we had extravaganza this weekend. Uh, it was an awesome time. So if you guys want to extravaganza, just stand for me real quick. Yeah, that's right. Woo, yeah. So we're missing a couple of them. Uh, they aren't here this morning, but we took a, you, can, you guys can sit. Uh, we took a total of 13 kids to extravaganza. Uh, super awesome. It was a really fun time. Uh, we had a basketball team uh, come from Lakeview Park. Uh, we went three and one on Friday. So we won three games, lost one. And then, uh, yeah, that's right. They played really well. And then Saturday morning, we started tournament play and we lost our first game. So that put us in fourth place uh, of the tournament, which is a great start with only having two practices and going. I'll take it. So absolutely. So uh, it was a fun time. We also had uh, Rory uh, Nowlin. Uh, I don't think they're here this morning, but he played with the middle school team, and they actually got first place, so he got a medal, so go Rory. And then Raker, his brother, he played on the football team, and they got third place. So uh, really cool to see uh, all of our kids participating. Uh, some of them just came and hung out, and it was great. Uh, it was really fun. We had a... Um, Sorry, our speaker was Lamoris Crawford. Uh, he was the chaplain for the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, graduated from Olivet Nazarene. Uh, was a super cool dude, uh, very, it was awesome. It was a good time, so I'm sure they enjoyed the services. Um, it was fun. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about Triple FN, uh, we're doing a craft there too, and uh, Beta has made an example in the back uh, behind the tech booth. So if you guys will go check that out so you guys can uh, make a craft uh, on Friday too, that'd be awesome. So I'm going to read scripture and pray, and then uh, we'll get back into worship. Uh, so this scripture is uh, one of the ones that Lamoris used uh, over the weekend, and it was just really cool to hear this, and uh, the sermon he brought was fire that night. It was so good. And so uh, it's from 2 Timothy 4. Uh, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Man, isn't that so good? So good. Uh, I'm going to pray and we're going to continue to worship. God, thank you so much for this day. Uh, thank you for this church, God, and the amazing things that you're doing uh, through this church. Thank you for our youth and our teens. Uh, it was said last night, they, they aren't the future of the church, they are the church. And so uh, just keep moving through the teens in this church, God. Uh, bless this service as we continue to worship and Pastor Susie comes and gives her message, God. Uh, we love you and we praise you. In your name I pray, amen. Let's stand together and sing.
that what we want? We just want to be with him. We want to be in his presence all day long.
Oh, that's a handkerchief. It's been a handkerchief morning. Do you have any idea what that means? Let me tell you, when I was growing up, my grandmother had a hanky. And even my dad would always carry a hanky. Elmer B. Schellenberger always had a hanky in his pocket. And when they were moved, when the Holy Spirit moved like he is now, they'd wave that, Levina's got one. They'd pull out that hanky and wave it. And people would shout glory, and hallelujah, and amen. And I shouted a few amens over there. Probably nobody could hear me, but God heard me. It's been a handkerchief morning so far. If we just left right now and went home, we could say, well, we had church this morning. Glory, hallelujah, God is here. Hey, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, may God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. Put you together, spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master Jesus Christ amen he is coming back it's not a hope it's a fact it's reality Jesus will return the one who called you is completely dependable if he said he'll do it he'll do it <laughs> I want to echo Pastor Jordan's praise for our teens and for an amazing week at, at Extravaganza this weekend. I got to see one of their games on Friday afternoon. I'll tell you what, we've got a basketball team that hustles. You guys are hustlers. I mean, you were just, you were all over that court, and I just, I was in awe. We have a good, good team here, and I'm so happy that many of you could be here this morning, uh, and some of them that were, were playing couldn't be here, but we're glad that they were Extravaganza. Hey, we want to praise God this morning uh, for James Farrell. He had some foot surgery last week, and he is recovering well. Uh, we just want to praise God that that's over, and now he's in the recovery mode. Uh, we also want to pray this morning, though, for a few people. Felix Hilburn had a procedure done in his back this week. We want to continue to pray for him, and we want to pray for uh, Les Wright. He'll be seeing his doctor in April, April 13th, and his right arm is giving him some trouble, and we want to keep Les in our prayers. Uh, Levina West is just about finished with chemo. Yes. We've been praying for her, and we want to keep doing that. And Lois Johnson couldn't be with us this morning, but Ellen, her daughter, does such a good job taking care of her. But Lois is in pain, and we want to keep praying for Lois, that the Lord would intervene. And also, we want to pray for Ukraine this morning. I know that that's always on your mind, and you won't forget that. But this morning for prayer time, could I have some people represent these that we've mentioned, Felix Hilburn. Could I have someone come down front and just kneel in honor of Felix? Thank you, Pastor Dana. And uh, Les Wright, who, Caleb, would you mind coming forward and, and just kneeling and praying for your grandpa? And uh, Levina West, Lori, would you come forward and pray for her? And also, we want to pray for Lori's mother this morning. Uh, Pam Beers, would you be able to come forward and pray for Lori's mother? Uh, Lori's mother has been put on hospice. And uh, she fell getting out of bed this morning, and uh, Lori has some, some big family things to tend to today. And so we want to keep Lori and her mother in prayer. And then Lois Johnson. Uh, Midge, would you mind coming forward and praying for Lois Johnson? And uh, for the Ukraine, who would want to come and just bow as we pray for the... Thank you. Thank you, Jason Z. So let's go to, let's go to prayer. Father, we pray that you would place a hedge of protection around those in the Ukraine. Lord, we pray for a revival in Ukraine. We pray for a revival in Russia. And Father, we pray that, that uh, you would bring a, a ceasefire to Russia, that you would move in uh, Vladimir Putin's heart. It, it seems impossible, but Jesus, you are the God who still does what's impossible in our eyes. And Lord, we know you can move in Putin's heart. We know that... Even in a hardened heart, Lord, your Holy Spirit can break through. And we pray for that. We pray for the people of Russia and, again, for the people of Ukraine. Lord, for all those who are represented right here at the altar this morning, thank you for these folks who are kneeling now in, represent, in representation of the one for whom they are praying. Lord, we pray that you would meet their needs, that you would grant healing to these people. And thank you for their love for you. And Jesus, thank you that we don't have to worry about a bomb hitting our church this morning, that we got to come here in freedom and worship you in peace without any fear at all of being in trouble once we open these doors to this church. Father, I thank you uh, for 
uh, uh, the teens on the first two rows. Thank you for teen turf, for them filling up the first two rows here in the, our middle section. Lord, I pray your hand on this teen group. Lord, I pray that uh, you would transform their hearts and that you would place your hand of blessing on each teen, that you would keep them safe and that you would draw them ever closer to you. Thank you, Jesus, for Pastor Joden and for how you're using him. Thank you for Pastor Alicia and how you use her in the children's department and for Dana and Mike. Lord, we just thank you, Father, and for Annette Farrell who kind of holds the church together over there in the church office. We pray continued healing for Felix's foot. We love you, Jesus, and now help us to show our love for you. Help us to demonstrate our love for you by giving you our offerings and then the tithe that already belongs to you. Help us to be obedient in that, Jesus. We love you so much. In your name we pray, amen. Ushers, will you come forward now? Let's obey God as we give him our tithe and offering. And Beta Knoll is going to be bringing our offertory special for us.
the book of Hosea, the Old Testament book of Hosea. It's a short little book. And uh, right now, though, before we dive inside of Hosea, I want to challenge all of you to think of a couple of things that you're thankful for. Will you do that? Just right now, think of a couple things that you're thankful for. About midway during the sermon, I'm going to ask some of you to just stand up and share what you're grateful for, okay? Now, if nobody stands up, then I may start calling on you. So make sure that you think of a couple of things, okay? Um, just a quick recap. In this Old Testament book of Hosea, we're talking about this godly prophet who was privileged to experience some of the same pain that God experiences. Of course, it wasn't nearly as great as God's pain, but it's a parallel. And uh, the pain of, of that God feels when his loved ones reject him. You see, God had commanded that Hosea marry a, a prostitute. Her name was Gomer. And Hosea loved her. He provided a wonderful home for her. But Gomer was continually unfaithful to Hosea and continued to wander and have relations with other men and he would continue to bring her back home and to build a, a wonderful home for her. Well, sometimes that's how we are. We are the bride of Christ and sometimes we are unfaithful to him, wandering away and God wants to lovingly bring us back. That's why we're calling this whole series Redeeming Love because through the whole series, even though God does issue some judgment and some wrath uh, and discipline, the overriding theme is, but I love you, and I want you back, and I'll do anything I can to get you back. And that's the theme of the entire book, Redeeming Love. So we're in Hosea 2.2, and God is speaking. Let's go ahead and look at this first scripture. He says, rebuke your mother. Okay, who should rebuke your mother? Should anybody do that? Well, he's talking specifically to the children of Hosea, the children of his wife, Gomer. Uh, one child, the first child, was actually Hosea's and Gomer's. The next two were children that Gomer had with relations with other men. But yet Hosea brought her back home, God's redeeming love. And, and so God is saying, okay, children, I, I want you to rebuke your mother. I want you to rebuke her for being a prostitute. I want you to tell her that's not right. And God is saying to Hosea, and that's how I want my people to be. I want, Hosea, for you to rebuke my people. Say, hey, it's not right to wander away from God. I love you, and I'll do anything to get you back. And so God is speaking here through Hosea. Rebuke your mother. Rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Now, in the next few verses, verses 2 to 13, they describe what God is saying here. Again, let me repeat. Hosea is a prophet of love. But he doesn't minimize the holiness of God. A lot of times we, we tend to think, well, God is love, love shmove, and, and love always wins, and all that. Well, yes, God is love and mercy and grace, but he's also a God of holiness and a God of justice. And he cannot allow sin into his perfect holy kingdom. That's why he sent Jesus, his son, to pay the ultimate price for our sins so that we could be forgiven and enter heaven as holy people. See, somebody has to pay for your sins. It's either you or Jesus. And God loves you so much, he says, you know what, I'm going to send my own son Jesus to pay those sins for you because I really want you into my kingdom, my perfect kingdom, but I can't let you in with sin, and so I'm going to pay the price. Well, okay, so it's already done, so I'm going to heaven. Well, not necessarily, not unless you accept the gift. We can, I can hold a $20 bill here in front of the teens and I can say, hey teens, this belongs to you, but until, until Caleb comes up and takes it out of my hands, it's not really his, is it? And it's the same way with salvation. We can say, yeah, Jesus died for my sins, he did, but until you accept it and ask him to forgive your sins, then that gift doesn't belong to you yet. So yes, Hosea is prophesying about a God of love, but he's also remembering we serve a holy God. We're, we're told in uh, 1 John 4, 8 that God is love. But we're also reminded in 1 John 1, 5 that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. There's no sin at all. There's no darkness. There's no deceit in God at all. God's love is a holy love. It's not a sentimental, gushy feeling that condones sin and pampers sinners. Well, that's okay. Well, I love you. Well, you didn't mean to. No, 
When Jesus forgave the woman at the well who had been in sin, he didn't say, well, you know, these things happen. He said, I forgive you, now go and sin no more. And, and Hosea is reminding us here, we serve a holy God. Yes, he's love, and he wants to forgive you, but his love is not a sentimental, gushy feeling that just condones sin, and it's okay, sinner, just keep on, oh, well, you're going you're gonna to sin a few more times, it's okay, no. God's a holy God. He wants to forgive you and empower you with his spirit to live a holy life. Okay, now, in the next section of Scripture, Hosea the prophet focuses on three particular sins that were happening at this time with Israel and God. Remember, Israel is God's bride. We, too, are God's bride. We're married to him when we accept him as our Savior. And so he's pointing out three sins. The very first sin that he points out is idolatry. Look at that ugly golden calf. I mean, that's an ugly idol. Why would anybody put their faith in that? Why would anybody sacrifice and pray to that kind of idol? But they would. And they still are today. It may not look like a golden idol today. We see it in all different forms. But many of us have idols in our lives that we continually have to give to God. I remember a few years ago I was in Thailand speaking in Thailand. And I was just, my heart broke when I saw all the Buddhist temples and people walking in and, and bowing down before the golden Buddhists and just giving everything, giving money and fruit and vegetables and just giving so much. And I thought, how sad. That's a golden statue that has no power at all. That golden statue cannot bless them in any way for giving, them, for giving it this money or this food. Well, we have idols. They just don't look like a golden Buddha or a golden calf or a golden a golden bail, but we too have idols in our lives. Okay, what's an idol? It's anything that's as important as God or more important than God in your life. That's an idol. So idolatry is the first sin. Hosea is going to bring out three sins, and the first one is idolatry. And God speaks to the children, the people of Israel, and tells them, rebuke your mother, that's Gomer, because she's been unfaithful. Say, hey mom, this isn't right. You're not pleasing God by this lifestyle. Well, the whole country of Israel was guilty of worshiping the gods of the pagan nations around them, especially the Canaanite rain god Baal. Now, whenever there was a drought or a famine in the land, the Jews would repeatedly turn to Baal, the golden idol Baal, for help instead of turning to the Lord. Now, that's described in detail in 2 Kings 18 and 19. You can read that later. But this pagan idol worship involved both male and female prostitutes. So it wasn't simply praying to a golden, ugly idol of Baal. It wasn't simply giving Baal sacrifices and money. But it was also a whole prostitution thing underneath this Baal idol worship. Male prostitutes and female prostitutes. So idolatry meant prostitution is involved. And because the people were acting like prostitutes... God would treat them like prostitutes and shame them publicly. He would no longer claim the nation as his wife because she had broken that solemn marriage covenant and consorted with idols. Now, according to Hebrew law, adultery was a capital crime and it was punishable by death. But God announced through Hosea that he would discipline them and not destroy them. Unfaithfulness to the Lord is a serious sin. Just as unfaithfulness to one's mate is a serious sin. The man who says he's 90% faithful to his wife isn't faithful at all. And as Israel was tempted to forsake God for idols, the church, we are tempted to turn to the world system that hates God and wants nothing to do with God. So, my friends... As, as your loving pastor, let me lovingly, lovingly warn you that as Christians, we need to be really, really, really careful not to love the world and not to conform, not to become like the world. Don't love the world. Don't conform to the world around you. But many in the church, and I'm speaking church at large, worldwide, 
are doing this. And I've mentioned this in the past. There are pastors who teach their congregations there is no such thing as hell. That doesn't exist. Yet the Bible says it does. And Jesus spoke more about hell during his time on earth than he did in heaven. But that's, that's the church becoming like the world and adapting the thoughts and philosophies of the world. Did you know now that there is a Queen James Bible? I read about this just two days ago. There's a Queen James Bible that the LBTQ community developed so it would be more friendly to them. So uh, let's just take out the passages that we don't agree with and let's kind of rewrite it and we'll have a Queen James version. That's, again, that's people in the church who are saying, you know, we'll let the world influence us and believe it. this lifestyle is okay and I can do that and, and I still love God and, and no, it's not okay. <laughs> We, we can be walking a, a fine line sometimes when we begin to love the world and the things in the world. God, is, God has a higher calling on us, and we are to separate ourselves from the world. The next sin that Hosea draws our attention to is in chapter 2, verses 5 and 9. He's calling our attention to three sins. The first one is idolatry. The second one is ingratitude. And so instead of thanking the true God for his blessings and, uh, and, and his, his blessings of food and, and water and provision and clothing, the nation thanked the false gods and used those gifts to serve idols. What ingratitude. What ingratitude. Remember, I told you a few minutes ago, be thinking of a, a few things you're grateful for because I'm going to call on you in a minute. God provided rain for the entire land. But the Israelites gave credit to Baal, their false god. It's God who gives us power to earn wealth, rain the crops, harvest the crops, sell them for money. And so you may, sell, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And it's God who helps us enjoy the blessings of life. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Well, I don't know, Pastor Susie. I mean, I don't think God is richly providing for me. Well, when you came into church this morning, I noticed that you were wearing shoes. He provided those shoes. And I noticed that you all had clothes on. <laughs> who do you think provided those clothes? And I'm guessing some of you had some breakfast this morning. And probably all of you will have something to eat at lunch. God provides those things. You had a good night's sleep. You probably slept on a bed. Maybe some who slept in Joden's house slept on the floor. I'm not sure. They were staying with him t last night. But God provided your sleep. He provided for you. But God is blessing us. God is blessing us. It's wickedness to take the gifts of God and use them to worship false idols. So I'm going to take the food, I'm going to take the crops, I'm going to take my shelter, my clothing, everything he's given me, and I'm going to thank this false God for it. Well, how would that relate to us in this day? Because well, I don't have a false idol in my I don't have a gold statue in my Well, I'm going to, I'm going to take the gifts of all this, and I'm, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm pretty sharp. <laughs> it's me who did all this. No, no, no. Oh, what a sin. Hey, I, I'm pretty good. I, I'm, I made this money for myself. I invested in that stock and it did real well. No, no. God guides. God provides. Don't give gratitude where it doesn't belong. God is the one who provides our gratitude. Well, at this point, God had every right to just abandon his people. But instead, he chose to discipline them. We can thank him for that. We can thank him that when we mess up and when we mess up royalty, God doesn't throw his hands up in the air and say, well, I've had it with you. No, he takes the time and he disciplines, he corrects us, and he brings us back to him. Again, redeeming love, the theme of this book. That he chose to discipline. This nation would chase after false God, 
gods, but Jehovah would block their path. And he would confuse their plans so they'd stumble on the way. And he'd take back his gifts. And he would leave the nation as naked as a newborn baby and as barren as a desert. That's how he disciplined them. It's remarkable how many times throughout the Bible that God's people are admonished to be thankful. Thankful. We're told time and time and time again, give him thanks for his blessings. Do you have those few things in your mind? Keep thinking of them. Now, one of the first steps toward rebellion. Did you know this? One of the first steps toward rebellion against God is refusal to give God thanks for his mercies. And here's the proof. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. God will not allow us to enjoy his gifts and at the same time ignore the giver. For this is the essence of idolatry. So if we're enjoying the blessings that he's given us, and we're failing to say, thank you, God, then that's idolatry. So I I just want to stop right now, and I want you to bow your heads and silently thank God for at least three things. Will you do that? Just right now, bow your heads, silently thank God for three things. As we're doing this, Katrina Calvert, our SNU intern, I'm going to ask you to come and grab that mic. Would you do that? And I'm going to ask you to kind of be a runner Some of you would like to stand and thank God verbally for something or some things in your life. Would you do that now? Just go ahead and stand. Okay, Katrina, when you see somebody, you just head back there. Keep standing. Most of you know that last year was a pretty tough year. That was especially true for Donna and me on the 27th of January. Donna had her first cataract surgery. On the 4th of February, both of us were, di- were uh, tested positive for COVID. On the 10th of, of March, Donna had uh, uh, her second cataract surgery. In April, late April, she had a mammogram done. And the upshot of that was that uh, she was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. And uh, through all of that, a um, uh, uh, a biopsy that went terribly wrong, and a diagnosis of breast cancer on her birthday last year, <laughs> of all days. Um, so all of that uh, surgery on the 10th of, July, of uh, June, 20 um, radiation treatments July through the 17th of August, and all of that uh, in one year. Now you may be thinking, what am I grateful for? Let me just share with you some of the things that God did during that time. When she went to visit with her surgeon the first time, her surgeon went out and looked at the x-rays and so forth and came back and said, you had a really good radiologist. She said, I would have been very hard pressed to catch that. And I thought, thank you, Dr. Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes. I just believe that um, Jesus looked over the shoulder of that radiologist and said, don't miss that. And on top of that, when we had all had COVID and so forth, we were kind of moving some um, appointments around and canceling some doctor's appointments. And Donna shared that when she came to that appointment, she just felt very strong in the Lord and said, don't cancel that. Don't cancel that. And the good news is that um, in her last checkup, Donna is cancer free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. But here's the biggie. Here's the biggie. Here's the big thing that I'm really thankful for. When all this was going on, one of the first things I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm not finished with her yet. She has been my companion. She has been my confidant, my best friend, my partner in ministry for well over four decades. I'm not finished yet. Here's the number one thing that I'm grateful for today. My God 
spared my wife's life. Mm. Mm. And I'm grateful. Beta, thank you for singing that song. No one ever cared for me. Yeah. And my wife, like Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Cheryl Curtis. There's so many things I kept thinking of. What could I say? What could I do? And, you know, um, but I came up with, I'm glad that I can see. I'm glad that I can hear and all of the five senses. And then I also am glad that um, the Lord heightens our spiritual hearing and our spiritual seeing through discernment. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, I have a couple things I'm thankful for. Um, one, we brought up about uh, the work of our hands and God providing our jobs and everything like that. I remember uh, a little while back, I was talking to my mom and I was talking to somebody else. Um, I was in the search for a job. And I never, and every time I was in the search of a job, I've never had any anxiety, never had issues. Because the Lord always provided mm -hmm. whenever I stopped searching. So whenever I gave it to the Lord, whenever I just surrendered it all to him and stopped worrying about it, stopped pressing, the Lord had always provided. And here recently, I started a new job with the FAA. I was a contractor. Now I'm on the Fed side, but it happened that way again. I was looking. I was putting out feelers, if you will, and applying different places. And once I stopped and I gave it to the Lord, someone messaged me and said, hey, there's a job. Hey, you look into this, you need to do this. And then I had another guy just come in, come alongside of me and say, hey, let me look at your work or your application. Let me look at everything before you submit it. Yeah. And, uh, and now, you know, I'm blessed and I'm starting this new job with the FAA. Amen. That was one thing. The other thing I was also thinking about was, you know, it was about a year ago. My dad passed away. Um, can't say that I'm thankful for that, but the process, going through it, being with him, you know, God was in the midst of it all. Um, there was peace in the midst of it all. And there was peace when he passed away. Um, and then with that, I decided to move in with my mom after my dad passed away. The, you know, nice size home and you know she didn't want to be there by herself but uh surprisingly thankful i'm thankful to god he gave me peace to move in you know I, i'm a loner and i don't mind that i was living in a house by myself doing my own thing and there was a little bit of concern of how it would be when i moved back in with my mom and i mean it's just been a blessing my mom is a blessing. She's always been a blessing. And, you know, God is so good. I, he's been so faithful to me, you know, always. And I'm just, I'm just grateful to the Lord for, for my mom, who's a blessing. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, I'm grateful for everything. Grateful to take a breath. Grateful to open my eyes. Grateful for every five minutes that I had. Yeah. And I'm very grateful to all of my church family that prayed for me, that visited me, and checked on me all the time and for all your prayers. And God is good. All the time. Amen, Tammy. Amen. Oh, it's good to give God thanks. Man. I just real quick, because I'm never a quick person. Um, I'm really thankful for this church. You talked about how Hosea, sometimes a lot of us have lived a really whorish life. Some of us um, forget, and I've used this illustration in the Sunday schools that I've visited, but I wanted to say it again, that each one of you in this church, regardless of who you are, 
or where you've been. You need to know that you bless people, that you are a blessing, and that every one of you in my life, in some way, whether you know it or not, or how you know it, or whether you know it, took, a, took somebody that was living a paralytic life in Christ, and you guys have started to dig a hole in the roof for me. Mm. And I am thankful for that. Amen. So thank you. Amen, Jason. Amen. You know, there are a lot of things that I have to be thankful for to me that I don't have enough fingers or toes to count. Uh, however, the things that really jump out and hit me the most is most of my young adult life, I never thought I ever wanted to be married. I never wanted a family. I never wanted children. You know, I just kind of looked at those things, not necessarily as a bad thing, but something that I don't think that I, at the time, thought I ever really wanted. Then I met my wife. <laughs> and June will be 21 years we've been married. Wow. And, yeah. Good, good. And on top of that, I'm extremely thankful that she's cancer-free for almost six years now. <laughs> yes. So I still have my wife. And the, the other thing I'm thankful for is my children that she gave me. You know, the family that I always wanted and just didn't know it at the time. And it's, it's all, it's a God thing. You know, without a doubt, it's a God thing. Because her, my wife, brought me into God as well as far as like getting to know him, wanting to get to know him. I always believed in God, but I always thought I was too insignificant for him to really worry about, you know, who am I? You know, uh, why, why would he love me? I'm just this little speck of sand on the beach that's insignificant and unnoticeable. And uh, she made me realize you know, that's not the case, you know, and, and I will always, always value and cherish that. Um, the other thing, speaking of health, my, my health, you know, I, I never, I am very blessed. I, I, I love to go to the gym. And here's the thing is, is I don't take that for granted. You know, at my age, I can still do a lot of things that I could do when I was in my 20s or even better. And, and that's not because of my hard work and me being smart, because I haven't been very smart with myself over the last 20, 30 years. You know, but God has given me the ability to be able to still go to the gym and still do the things I love. And I can connect with so many people at the gym and so many younger people that, for whatever reason, they seem to kind of look up to me, you know, kind of my buddies. And we all have kind of something to share and something in common. And sometimes I can impart a little bit of knowledge of, don't do that or you'll hurt, my, hurt yourself. Trust me, I know. You know, um, but probably probably a bigger thing is, is you know, we're constantly inundated in the news with just how horrible this country is. You know, there, there's you never hear anything positive about it. You never hear about really moments like this. And you made the comment earlier about thank God we can come to church and not be in fear of being bombed. Thank God we live in a country that we can even complain openly about the things we don't like, because there are a lot of places in this world right now where we can't do this. And if we do, we are literally in risk of our lives. And I will literally never, ever, ever take that for granted. And again, it's, it's a God thing. So thank you, all of you, very much for listening to me. And, um, you know, that's about it. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. First, I have two children, a Susie Seven. Juan Diego of 22. Juan Diego lives in Guatemala with my mom. My mom went to the doctor and she was told twice that she needed to have surgery. And this third time that she went, my son told her that he was gonna be praying for her before going to the doctor. Yeah. And the doctor told her that she needed to have surgery in both of her eyes because of glaucoma. And she accepted. And she got surgery this last Friday. And I'm grateful to God because uh, he used my son to touch her for her to agree to have her surgery. 
That's why I'm praying. Wonderful. And thank Wonderful. you all for being my family. Thank you so much for translating. Thank you. I am grateful, so grateful, for the way God shares his splendor and glory through Oklahoma sunsets. Mm. Oh, I like that. That's good, Annette. That's good. Donnie. I, it's, uh, it's interesting to me that you uh, allowed this time today. Um, I was actually just reminded of this when me and Pastor Joden took a drive this week. Um, I don't really talk about it a lot because most people that are around know kind of our story, but I am thankful for family. Um, those of you who don't know, um, we went through a lot of uh, issues with infertility um, and the highs and lows of all of that. Um, then started an adoption process that we thought wasn't going to happen. So we ended up just using that adoption fund to go on a vacation. And in the middle of our vacation, got interrupted by the adoption agency, um, which gave us Abby. Wow. Um, so <laughs> I, okay. So I am very thankful for that story um, and that that can be used to bless others. So thank you. Amen. Amen. One more. Larry Lockridge has something to be thankful for. Oh, it's good to thank the Lord, isn't it? Man. Right now, he and his angels are just rejoicing in your gratitude and that we're giving it to the, to the giver. <laughs> um, most of all, I'm grateful for uh, the gift of salvation. Mm, yeah. And uh, without that, everything else would be lost. I'm grateful for family, for a wife that's supportive and family that's supportive. Um, that means a lot. Yes. I'm grateful for this church and for the leadership and for the friends that we have here and uh, the way they support one another. We just praise God for that. Thank you, Larry. Let's give God a hand. Oh, we've got one. Wait, we got two more. We'll get to you in a minute, Linda. Hang on. Wait, yeah, and way back at the back. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Debbie Lloyd, we love it whenever your parents come here to visit. I know you're members at BFC, but we love having you pop in about once a month. Thank you for coming back today. Yes, Linda. Well, I'm new to the church here. I've known Susie for a little while. Uh, the things I'm thankful for is, number one, this church. Mm. Y'all have drawn us in and drawn us in. The last two, well, Friday, 
we're coming to play God, cards or whatever you're going to do. And that's how we're going to spend our anniversary. Oh, neat. April 1st will be five years. <laughs> and wow. it's been the best of times and the worst of times. But during that worst of times, my God was there. Rick had prostate cancer. And we spent, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, at the cancer treatment center mm -hmm. while he had his prostate removed. And I'd always heard old timers say they could feel people praying for them. Yeah. That was during COVID. I could have no one there with me except me and Jesus. Yeah. Five hours of peace. And I told Rick, I said, I thought about that and how at peace I was. And I thought, oh, I am one of those old timers. <laughs> <laughs> but this last two years, we've gone through cancer, the death of a parent. His dog was 17. He had had for 14 years. And no one ever cared for us like Jesus. Yeah, that's right. I am so thrilled you saying that. That's right. Because I had confidence. Rick and I have been through financial issues. God was there. So don't ever just think, oh, well, he's there. He lives here. Yes. And I love this church. I love Pastor Susie. But most of all, I love God. And Amen. I love my Jesus. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Katrina, we got one more way back at the back. Debbie Lloyd's mama. <laughs> Oh, this is great. This is better than any sermon. The Lord keeps telling me I need to share just a bit. I'm so grateful that for 37 years, uh, excuse me, I got to be a pastor's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then God called me in the midst of those times to be in children's ministries and speak for boys and girls camps. He called me to be a musician in the church for many years. And then in my late life, he gave me a, ma a man to marry that is revered by this church and has been a long time associate pastor. I'm so grateful today for all those things. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Yes, Elaine. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Just giving me such peace and guiding me and making decisions. And I can look back and see so many decisions that have been made. And I just pray and ask Him to guide me. And um, I have, I'm just so grateful. He's so faithful, isn't He? Yes. Well, yes, Rick. <laughs> I can't let my wife do all the talking. <laughs> this lady here has put up with me for five years on April 1st. We put on our wedding invitations, two old fools, Rick and Linda, April 1st, <laughs> 2017. God has brought us through cancer, through COVID, and he, I'm cancer free also, and it's because of him. And I love this church. I love everybody here. I don't know everybody here yet, but we will be joining this church come May when Pastor Susie says that people that want to join can join. But uh, once again, my mother, let me tell you a quick story. I told my mother prior to her passing away, I said, Mother, it's all right if you want to go be home with Jesus and Daddy. She said, oh, yes, I want to be home with Jesus, but not so much your dad. <laughs> I said, Mom, why not Dad? Well, he'll make me cook three meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I have uh, more of this sermon that I, that, that I just don't think it's important to finish the sermon. <laughs> I'm going to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and uh, I just praise God for your testimonies. That, that in itself is the sermon. Um, so if, if you don't mind, uh, we're, we're going to get ready to close in a moment. Uh, but what the, the overriding theme of what I've just heard, you know, Rick had cancer. Uh, we've, you, many of you have talked about the death and then how God gave you peace through that and cancer over here. And just, um, you know what that tells me? It tells me that God takes something bad and has the power to redeem it and transform it into something good. This wasn't planned, but just a cappella. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful out of my life. Again, the overriding theme is God's redeeming love. And I want us to close the service by singing that, by singing about his redeeming love. If you don't know God's redeeming love this morning, he would love a love on you right now. And you could come forward and kneel at this altar and ask him silently, Jesus, would you forgive my sins? I want to live my life for you. And I want to know this kind of love that we're talking about. And he will come into your life and forgive your sins. Now, many of you have already done that. You're already walking with God and you know his redeeming love. But just as we've shared in gratitude testimony this morning, you may want to come and spend some time around the altar and say, Oh, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a million times. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. I want to make sure that I give the gratitude to you. So let's stand. And if God leads you to come forward, you obey him. But uh, after... After this, then I will come and lead us in a prayer of dismissal.
your attitude and the praise and the glory and the honor because you are really the only one who is due all that. And so, Father, we direct all of our attention to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for such wonderful love. Jesus, <laughs> thank you that your people have been the sermon this morning. Thank you for the way your Holy Spirit moves. And sometimes your spirit interrupts our human plans. And, Father, that's just fine with me. Because this is your church and this is your service, not ours. It's yours. And, Father, we want nothing more than for you to always get the glory. So thank you, Jesus, for a handkerchief, <laughs> a handkerchief and glory service. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, come meet one of these cool teens up here if you haven't met them yet. I'm so glad they're here.